Hey everybody and welcome to the Korean Startup Project. My name is Daniel and this is the YouTube channel that brings you all the latest gear, gadget and tech from South Korea. Today we're going to take a look at the Remove UK One's new app. They just launched a new app that allow you to control the Remove UK One remotely and we're going to see what it can do. All right, guys, before we get started using the K1 app, we need to turn on the K1's Wi-Fi network so that you can connect your smartphone to the K1. So to do that, you're going to go into camera settings, Wi-Fi, and then you're going to toggle on the Wi-Fi network. You'll see a little green toggle switch turn on when it's on, when the Wi-Fi network's on. Below that is your ID and password. Go into that setting and you'll see the K1's ID, the network ID that is, and a password. On your smartphone, go to your Wi-Fi settings, find the K1 network, which is the same that you'll see as your uh, K1 ID, plug in your password, hit join or you know uh, connect, whatever it is on your smartphone. And then when that happens, your smartphone is now tethered to the K1, so the K1 app will work and you can control the uh, K1 remotely from the smartphone. And I've got to say, this app looks a lot better than the old app. It's laid out a lot nicer than the old one. It's really easy to navigate. And man, I can find everything that I need and it's right at my fingertips. Now, just to walk you through the app itself, just kind of an overview. At the top, you've got your main navigation, your main functions, where you can go and get uh, go a little deeper and look at all the settings if you want to do that. Right in the middle, you've got a nice big viewfinder so you can see what the K1 is looking at. Below that, you have some additional camera controls where you can uh, recenter the K1 camera, you can turn on pan and follow mode. Um, you can also go from front mode to selfie mode. You also have some motion options. So if you're doing time-lapse video, uh, or if you just want to kind of pan over a period of time, you can set that up. You can enter your gallery. And down at the bottom is what I really like. There's two big sections, one for recording videos and one for taking pictures. The old app tried to combine the two, really hard to figure out what you were doing there. This one makes it a lot easier. Tap the big red record button for video, tap the white button to snap a picture. Okay, so now you know where everything is, or at least a general layout of the app. Uh, let's start by talking about how you're gonna move the camera with the new K1 app. Um, the best way to do it, or really the only way to do it, is with the viewfinder. If you, when you first look at the viewfinder, it doesn't seem like you can do much with it, but you do a single tap on your screen, and then a little white circle is gonna pop up with an arrow, and you get a couple of other options. So when you tap and hold, that white circle, you can drag it around and you can see the K1's camera start to move. Now what I found is if you drag up and down and left and right, it moves very well. But when you're trying to move diagonally, it doesn't respond as much. But your vertical and horizontal uh, panning and tilting works very well. So that's how you can control camera movement. Now you also have an option that allows you to change the speed at which the camera moves. Before I was on normal, now I'm on fast. And you also can zoom in. There's an option there. But again, digital zoom is not that great. So if you don't have to zoom, don't. Now I can also hit a little button to recenter the camera. Give me a second. There we go, recentered. It is a little laggy sometimes, but you may have to press once or twice to get it to do what you want. But at least the options are there for you. All right, so now we need to record a video. And this is what I really like about the new K1 app. There's a big red record button down here. Um, so I know if I'm recording a video versus actually taking a picture. But I get a couple more options here that make recording videos a heck of a lot easier. Uh, right above the red record button is a video mode button. So now I can switch between just regular videos, which I can shoot up into 4K, you know, up to 4K resolution. I can shoot slow motion videos, and I can even do time lapses. Now, what you're gonna notice is below the red button, you're gonna start to see your um, resolutions, uh, your video resolution and frame rate options change as well. So you know exactly what you can and can't shoot in those different video modes. So for example, slow motion, I'm, I can shoot 1080p at 120 frames per second, 720p at 120 frames per second, or 720p at 20, 240 frames per second. Those are the only options that I get. When I go back to video mode, now I can shoot up to 4K, I could do 1080p at 60 frames per second. So it just makes it a lot easier for me to pick the right video mode for what I wanna film and pick the resolution that I want. 
Okay, so we've got video recording down. Very simple, big red button, choose your resolutions. But if you wanna take a picture, it's just as simple. Over on the right-hand side of the app, you're gonna see a white button. That's what you're gonna to use to snap your pictures with. Above that, you can choose between single images or burst mode. And below that, you can set your self timer and even turn on night mode. Okay, besides the options that you have for recording videos and taking pictures, you can also access the pro settings by selecting these sliders up at the top menu. Here on the pro settings, you can adjust ISO, white balance, your exposure setting, uh, and it's very simple. Now, pro settings aren't on by default. You have to toggle them on. Once they're on, you can go in and adjust everything as you like. So pro settings are the little sliders next to the gear icon. All right, guys, the last thing I want to tell you about is the gallery. The gallery is where you can view all your images and video that you've been shooting on your K1. Another cool feature in the gallery, besides viewing all your images, is it has an SD card kind of meter or gauge. It tells you exactly how much memory you have left to take pictures or videos with. I think that's kind of cool. It's a nice little touch, so I know if I'm, my card's almost full, whether or not I need to change it out. Hey, guys, that's all I've got for you today on the new RemoteView K1 app. It's a nice app, it does a lot of great things, helps you record videos and take pictures a lot faster and a lot easier. And it's definitely a lot better than the old K1 app that came with the K1 when it launched. Now, this app isn't perfect. Uh, I've had some problems connecting my K1 to my smartphone. The app has crashed on me a few times. Um, my K1's locked up once or twice, but I know RemoteView's working on it, so I still feel confident in using this app and using my K1, and you should too. So get out there and record some awesome videos. Now, again, if you want more detail about this app, how to use it and do crazy things like that, just uh, go check out our video that we've got in the description down below. That'll take you and guide you through uh, all the details. That's it for today. My name's Daniel. This is the Korean Startup Project. Thank you so much for watching. If you like today's video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And be sure to hit that bell icon so you get notifications when we upload a new KSP video. Now again, that's all for today. Thank you so much and goodbye.